Mark and Jada here. You are tuning into the God Bull Life Podcast, where anything goes because love covers all. God uses marriage to grow us and accomplish his will. He's got plans for your marriage too. Welcome back to the God Bull Life back. Podcast. We're excited about this because we just know that it's going to help so many people. It's honestly helped me just hearing you talk about things that I've never like heard your perspective, Mm -hmm. especially like we're in it, like we're living the life and we don't often look back to like talk about real, real things from a real place of like, Hey, this really happened. Like, how did you feel like doing this time? But one thing about podcasts and I learned this from my phone's right, my bad. (laughs) I learned this from, um, my first podcast that will never be seen <laughs> that like life is still going on as we're filming. Yeah. And so as we're filming, going through life and it's like, how do you talk about things? I mean, it's almost like premature mm-hmm. to talk about. Cause you're in it. Like you're going through it. Like, I feel like even if you think about babe, like the last two years, of our lives or That'd three years crazy. has been like some people's 10 years, like oh my God. squeezed into. So it's just, we've been going from thing to thing, to thing, to thing, to thing. So yeah, it's kind of like now we're finally coming out of it and in a place to where we can say like, okay, what happened? Yeah, and yeah, how did yeah. we actually grow through these things? Because like we've changed a lot. We've changed more than Every time, I think I heard Tim Ross say this, you know how much you've changed when you get around people that used to know the old you. Yeah. And you feel like, I, we do not know each other anymore. Nah. Like, we do not, like, we are Facts. not, yeah, yeah. Like, think about leaving Oregon, which was, like, crazy, like, insane because it was sporadic. Yeah. COVID hit, yep. and y'all, like she over what? here. <laughs> Yo, COVID hit, and we got what Sarai is. Okay, this is this is March. March twenty twenty. March. This is March. She's like nine months old. Yes. Maybe, yeah. And we've been with, and it's been just us. Yeah, in pretty Oregon. much in Oregon, just us, yeah. and mostly you because I was still going to work yeah. up until a month, well, two, two, three months prior to that. Like my last day at Nike in the building was like December something, December 13th. No, it was was like, yeah, early December. Yeah. That was my, yeah. My two weeks was coming out of Thanksgiving break, which would have been the end of November. So yeah, like the the second week of December. Yeah. But before that, I was pretty much for the most part, outside of two months that I had for paternity leave, Mm -hmm. I was actually going to work. I would get up at five, 15 in the morning, mm-hmm. I would shower the night before, get my clothes out. I will get up the next day, throw my clothes on, brush my teeth, and run to the train. Yeah. I wouldn't get home normally until like 6.30, mm-hmm. 6 at the earliest, but normally between like 6 and 7. And <laughs> you would be like, here. <laughs> it's so weird, right, like, listen. Here, here you go. <laughs> and I'm like, um... You do realize that I just came from dealing with all this passive aggression, these politics, these, this like, this just very nasty atmosphere. But I was at that point fully putting on the armor of God every day going to work to be there. And then not necessarily having enough time to take that armor off before I'm coming in the house and you're fed up and tired. And just needing space I mean, because you're dealing with a newborn. I mean, a newborn by myself. Like, and your first no time. family. First time. Too. No friends continuously. Like, we had friends, but, like, yeah. we were the first one with in kids. our friend group with kids. So, like, yeah. they didn't really know how to support all the time. Yeah. So, and also, they had jobs and yeah, stuff lives, to do. Sarah's, like, you know, so it's like, yeah, like, I was, things, yeah, all, I was yeah. going through all the things that new moms go through at that time. So, when you got home, I was like, here, because 
in my mind at that time, you had all day to yourself. Whether whatever you were battling, Yo, that whatever used to, you were, oh, uh, they used to like. Get you didn't have on a person. My nerves. You didn't have a person, literally depending on you for every waking moment, because she never took a bottle, never took a pacifier, couldn't sleep by herself, mm. like had to be held constantly. And I also had like new mom anxiety. So like wow. I couldn't leave her in the room wow. to take a nap because I'm like, is she breathing? Is she breathing? Is she breathing? Like constantly. So it was a whole, it was a whole thing, you know, in me and I'm still trying to film content, still trying to like get back, you know, like it was, a, it was all of heavy, that for heavy. the first time. I never experienced that type of shift before. So yeah, when you got home here, Take your child Which that was a whole so thing I can too. have a moment. That was a whole thing too because like that's happening, that's happening, and then work is just crazy. Yeah. yeah. On another level crazy. Yeah. And it got so bad, like the turning point was we were sitting upstairs in our bedroom at the foot of the bed. Mm -hmm. And you basically was just like, look, bro. <laughs> this you gotta change. It. Yeah, <laughs> something gotta change. Because yeah, you're putting on this armor to go, but like... Which I did not understand at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, when you come back in here, you still like have, you have on stuff from there. Yeah. And it's coming in here. Yeah. Like you're not being what we need you to be. You aren't being you. You aren't being the person I knew you to be. Which is what was needed of me, especially during that time with a yeah, newborn child. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because I could tell, like, that atmosphere that you were going into every day was literally changing your whole, like, personality. Like and I was convinced that it wasn't, that I wasn't. That's the thing, right? And how People do you think I felt? Because <laughs> I'm like, uh, hello, you are, like, not you yeah, <laughs> anymore. I wasn't, you are, like, I wasn't. this frustrated anxiety like intense can't put down work you've been gone all day and you still on your laptop when you get home yeah, like I bring my laptop home and like sitting in front of the tv with like a game on or something and i was just like yeah going in and back then like my relationship with god was limited to that lunch it was early in the morning yeah it was lunches when i wasn't like hooping or on a fast and it was, um, when I left, I would like pray, but it wasn't, it wasn't a continuous, like all day thing. Mm -hmm. So I would get in positions at work where, where I was like, okay, like, what do I do? I'm gonna go do this. And it would just like bring on so much anxiety and so much like extra because one thing about corporate America, the politics is, are insane. <laughs> and you can go into it one way and thinking that, you know what? I'll never do that. Yeah. I'll never like that's not. But eventually you will come to a crossroads. Yeah. <laughs> where you either do what everybody else is doing, fall in line, and or you have a very rough route. Yeah. And I had a very rough route. Yeah. And but that conversation changed things because that made leaving it even more real. Mm-hmm. Rewind, probably probably a year prior to this, a year and a half prior to this, God told me to leave Nike and I chose not to. It was comfortable, it was safe, it was like, yo, I got great insurance with my family, um, I'm making a decent living. I mean, know. and the lifestyle we had, I mean, let's be honest. Traveling like, around the world, listen. like we were, had access to stuff. Um, I was, I, I'm, I'm always big on relationships. Like, that's huge for me. Like, to me, like, you can be good. You can be a good talk. All of that. You can be good at numbers. You can have all. But if you're not good at relationships, you will fall short because at the end of the day, excuse me, we're people. Yeah. Like, people doing a job or we're people first. I always say people over product. So, it's like people over process. Whatever you want to say, but, like, people come first. Yeah. So, like, for me, that was a place where I was like, okay, let me try to figure out how I can be me and still get the job done. And like that led to a lot of access to a lot of amazing things, yeah. almost 10 years, but it was coming to a close and it was quite clear yeah. that it was coming to a close. And it was a rough, it was a rough 
clothes at times because it was like. What do you mean at times? <laughs> well, yeah, at times. At it, times. It ended up. God ended up showing out. Of, we'll talk about that. But I'm saying today, like but. it wasn't like a clean cut like thing. It was a couple years of it like slowly but surely just like not being good anymore. And yeah. and it just started to like turn, you know, yeah. like it not started to feel it wasn't like at work anymore. No, it was like, OK, now, like, mm. you know, you're bringing home stress. You're like and, and not being able to like pull back from it and I wasn't in a position to, you know, like understand what all was happening because I've never worked in corporate America. I Oh yeah. I most of the stuff was like over her head. Yeah, like because I, I don't, I'm not in that environment. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I yeah. the last time I was in any sort of like like environment outside of working from home truly was when I was in grad school. So it was like, I didn't have this concept of like managers and like coworkers and all this stuff in the capacity that you were at, especially being at Nike, at y'all, Nike. Like yeah, it's, it's one of the top brands in the world. Literally. Yo. Nike's so the, incredible. Like what? Yeah. The people, like, like all of these incredible, incredible minds. Yeah. Like the best in the business. People yeah. that... Like working for Nike was on their vision board at 12 years old. Yeah. Not for me because <laughs> where I'm from, and that was like a whole other thing because where I'm, I'm from Oak Cliff, Oak Cliff, Texas, Oak Cliff, Texas, the hood. And the only way out, the only way to make a decent living for yourself was either you was working 80 hours a week, mm -hmm. which my dad did, um, or you was, was an athlete. Music, even not really music, unless it was gospel, because like rappers back then, it was all about Houston rappers. Like Dallas mm -hmm. rappers wasn't, there were local people that were good locally, but like now you have rappers today that's coming out of Dallas that are like on a bigger scale, a few of them. But, but like during that time, it was Mike Jones, it was Paul, it was all the Houston that was an Zero, era. Okay, can we just have a pause? <laughs> Look at what I'm wearing today. She's giving cowgirl, okay? She's giving cowgirl, she okay? Is. Come on, yeah, yeah, pause too, because oh my gosh. <laughs> You look so good. Thank I was you. trying to hold on. But like when you stopped and drew all the attention, and I got a chance to look. I'm like, oh, girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and we married too. So we can do whatever we want to do. Okay. We can do whatever we want to do. <laughs> so yeah. Kind of girl. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Kind of anyway. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, like back, like it was those rappers or whatever. So like, there was no, the, I didn't know that you can work in product in Nike. I didn't know that yeah. you could. That, that was um, like a thing, like a design whole. Design shoes and yeah. design clothes and work on these teams and do, do, um, fabrics and colors. And I, I had no clue that any of this existed. Mm -hmm. So like, but I'm working with people, like one of my coworkers, he had these, <laughs> these baby shoes on his did like four pairs. I'm always like, why, didn't, why does he have these? old old baby shoes i'm like uh, i don't know maybe they're like the first nikes ever or the first nike kit shoes ever and he's saving because like that was everybody's desk it was like a shrine of like all of these things that you would collect from like yeah. there with people sign helmets signs cleats all types of stuff so like my i think like my last week before i left i finally like asked him like yo like what are these shoes on your desk he's like oh um so like these are mine from when i was a kid because my mom um Worked at the employee store up the street. Wow. So, like, I grew up, like, he grew up across the street from, from the campus. campus. <laughs> and those are his shoes. And I'm like, his shoes like 30 years old. I'm like, okay. So, like, people had exposure to this stuff well before mm -hmm. people like me ever did. So, the people I'm working with, especially the people that look like me, were people from the same types of backgrounds that didn't know that these opportunities existed. Right. But they, like, floated. Like they were the cream of the crop from where they were from. Right. So we will all connect on that fact of right. like, yo, we we making the most money that our families have ever made in this collective and black it was like all of our friends. Group. Yeah, like, like all that of was our, our that was our community there. Was really like special, like you're the you are like like you said, cream of the crop. Like and that was honestly like speaking of like great people, 
that's what I think I loved most about Oregon was like not I mean the state is beautiful like oh, love Oregon, Oregon if you've never been go, go. okay go but Oregon the is... people but the people we met go. and the people we built relationships with were truly life incredible relationship. life relationships people. I used to watch Martin and stuff and I used to be like man I want a Tommy and a Cole <laughs> I want <laughs> watch the first print. I want yeah. jazz. Watch people grow, grow up, and like yeah. build these relationships. And like I want that. Yeah. And we got yeah. that in the most and natural. And it was so fun. Way. We had so much fun. Friendsgiving was always popping. Like we had. We did Easter together. Spread. We did Super Bowl parties together. We did game nights. We, we did. We went to church together. We went to church together. Like Good. we did like life together like people having babies people getting married like true people getting engaged people getting engaged like going we, to weddings we flew like, from oregon to dallas yes for our friends to get married yes. like to go to their wedding yeah. which was also incredible it was yeah. the same weekend we had sarah's which Baby is shower. a part of the story yeah yeah but oregon was like a fire incredible place where we met some dope people yeah. that we still to this day um talk to on yeah. a weekly basis like we love them yeah and so all of this is happening and finally i went for a job was highly touted for the job killed the interview i was, presentation was crazy i brought samples of stuff that i've done it was just great mm. and didn't get the job and they couldn't tell me why I talked to direct, I talked to everybody, HR, everybody. Nobody could tell me why I didn't get the job. Everybody, man, you did great. Blah, blah, blah. And then I was going for another role on the same team and great team. And basically guy was like, but I told you to leave. But I was still like, I, I will see what this is like. Mm -hmm. And one of the directors called me the day was it the day after Thanksgiving or the day before? It was the day before. The day before Thanksgiving. I never get this phone call. And he basically said, I want to develop you in-house, basically on my team. I don't want you to go to another team. And at that point, I said, you know what? I hung up the phone. We on Thanksgiving break, too. So, like, to, to me, Thanksgiving break and you know, Christmas break was like... I would like school because it was the same way. Like people would check out like the right. Like, why America. are you calling like, me? They why are you Thanksgiving? calling me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About about a job, and I got off the phone. I looked at you. I said, "Babe, I'm not supposed to be here." And we had this conversation for years. At the, for, at, for least at least a couple years. At least a couple years. Somewhat. Me year, telling you, yeah. like, babe, you know, God's telling me to leave, and you like, uh, nah, <laughs> <laughs> like. Um, that should be I a plan. I, like, listen. like you gonna start your brand cool. So like, bridge that together and leave making the same. Like, basically have a plan. And I didn't have time for no plan. Like people be like, oh, like your father nine. What's your father nine? My father nine had to become my family because mm -hmm. when it wasn't, mm -hmm. it was turmoil. Yeah, that was. A, after the conversation that you had me in a room, that was the biggest shift. I started to leave my laptop at work. Yeah. I no longer brought it home. Mm -hmm. When I left there, that was it. Weekend, it didn't matter. Like, it stayed on my desk because that was, like, me disconnecting. And it was it was hard for me because at the time, like, that was my advantage, in my opinion. Like, always being on. Yeah. Always well, seeing the were, next thing. You were trying the insight, to the visionary. literally, you were literally trying to outwork everything that they were telling you because you were so like committed to that job you were so In focused on I doing do. a great job that it was like when they started rejecting you truly and you couldn't understand why it was like your automatic response was to like oh i'm just gonna go harder like oh especially because during this time like after the cheap stuff i'm also building my relationship with god mm -hmm. so i'm fast i'm doing things i'm like god why is not working like i'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm showing up to work. I'm getting everything I got. Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And things were seemingly getting, they were they were good from a work standpoint as far as like performance. I was killing. Numbers were crazy. The designs was popping, brought new life to a dead category. Like, it was blazing. My team was, was good. Like, we were. And the product kicking. that you were I creating was, was like. Fire, like, fire. 
I was I was literally working on stuff with teams like the first fully digital product team where like we say the company millions of dollars by like not having samples and I was like doing a part of the presentation pitch to like VPs and like it was a big deal but that was also pissing people off mm -hmm. so to me I'm like well God the performance thing feels like me back then performance thing feels like me the relationship thing feels like you what's going on because I'm doing my part I'm being nice to people I'm helping people I'm showing up early I'm serving mm -hmm. I'm fat that guy like what's going on then I'm going home and home is is a mess so I'm like what's going on and God wasn't going to continue to bless somewhere that I, I was not supposed to be the clouds move so there's a story in I want to say it's numbers where basically God was a cloud. It was a pillar of fire by night and it was a cloud by day. And as long as that cloud stayed put, mm -hmm. all the Israelites were to stay put. But that cloud could be there for a day, could be there for a month, could be there for a year. They didn't know. All they knew was, that's God. So wherever God go, I gotta go. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were people who was like, well, shoot, I, I like this spot. Let, let me, I built my, my tent looking nice. I got it. I got surround sound in that thing. I got my sheep out here popping. Not the sheep. God, I know you're over there, but this feel good. That right. was me. Yeah. Like, yeah. God, you've left, and I know that you left. I can feel that you left. Yeah. But, like, I'm almost at a job I want. I'm, I'm, yeah. almost, I'm almost cracking 100K, yeah. like, money-wise. Like, this yeah. is clearly, this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. But I wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. So, like... The conversation over, you finally looked at me for the first time ever, first time in years, and you said, babe, if God told you to do it, then do it. I'll support it. That changed things. And I don't know if you knew what you were doing. Or I don't know if you understood what you were unlocking. This I, makes me I emotional. Did it. Wow. Oh, mm. babe. Wow. Whoa. Hmm. Because to be honest, like, that's what was stopping me. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, look, I'm 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 doing my part. Bring my check home. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not a bum, I'm not sitting sitting at home playing games, like I'm actually like out here doing this and I knew that this this ain't what it's supposed to be because this ain't what this can't be it. Right. But you would always I wanted to start out, but I wanted to do the yeah. things and you would be like, well no, babe, like I built this. And I'm like, then I read an article where it takes a brand five years before they start making real much. I'm like, what? <laughs> I might shoot, I might as well camp here because you know, I'm gonna start this business, I'm gonna start this brand, and I did. Like I started yeah, to you did. Die by both started yeah. first and I started dying shirt. So yeah. then I'm coming home, but I'm still going to work. Yeah. I'm coming home and I'm going to work. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, well, shoot, babe. I'm coming home. You trying to have me survive. But I need to go pop out these shirt orders because I gotta do this. Right. I was dying shirts at the time, dying shirts for Russell Westbrook. Like things were starting to pop off. Yeah. But it wasn't my full time right. job. So something had to give. I was still trying to do all the well, things I didn't understand. I, I like feel like was. at that time too, you tie dyeing was just an outlet. It, it was. was your safe space. It was a place where you felt like you were a valuable person. Because I feel like, you know, through all the stuff you were going through at Nike, like at the end of the day, they were trying to tell you that you weren't valuable. They were trying to tell you that like your skills weren't enough, that they couldn't even tell you why. They couldn't even tell you yeah. what was wrong. They just said, yeah. you're wrong. Yeah. You're not right for the position. Well, why? Yeah. Well, we, we can't really say, um, we don't really have an answer. It's just that this person had this ra other random experience, but it's like, so why am I- But then that person. <laughs> was sitting in front of me asking for my help. Listen, <laughs> that was a whole, that was a whole other story. <laughs> that was a whole other story. But like, yeah, I, we had 
my Kia Austin was in a garage, and I'm like, babe, can I have a garage? He was like, yeah. So I pushed that. The battery didn't start. I had to start Listen, it forever. I forgot about that car. Push that like, car out. That car? Buy the battery, sad. changed the battery myself, then sold it, <laughs> cleaned out the, the garage, and that became my studio. Yeah. And, like, things were a little bit better, but, again, the cloud has still moved back. And it's, God is going to grace you. He's going to still, like, and, allow you to operate in your gifts. He's still going to bless you. Even in your disobedience, because, like, Saul was still king for years after he had been disobedient. God didn't just kill Saul and say, you know what? Kingdom gone by. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can take that grace as, well, for granted. Right. And just keep riding. Well, it's still working. Right. Like, I ain't dropped dead. They ain't fire me. <laughs> I'm like, well, then there were like two different um, yeah. layoffs yeah. during this time, too. Yeah. That I never got laid off. Well, and that was like a false sense of security, too, because it was like, well, dang, if God really didn't want us to be here, I would have got fired. But like, yeah. you did. I got to tell this story. So during one of the first massive layoffs there, they set up the layoff, like, ground zero was on my floor. The office. <laughs> like, 10 feet away from me. They took over this, this presentation room, put these manila envelope papers over all the windows, blocked them off. They would literally come out and go into this office and come out with this big envelope and walk up to people and hand it to them and walk them out. <laughs> so, and they were there from like 8 a.m., I'll get to work every day like 7, 7.30. They'll be up from like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to work, get our job, get our jobs done. When at any moment, someone could come out and hand you an envelope and basically tell you that. Go you home and don't come back. <laughs> like, what? When this really popped off of me, like, in a real way, there was a woman, been there longer than me, from Brazil. And... She was working with them to get her as a green card. card. Mm -hmm. They walked out one day and gave this woman an envelope right in front of me. So the whole room was like, what in the... So y'all expect us to work at a high level when at any moment, every time you walk out this door, I come this direction, I'm like, is it going to be me? <laughs> so like, this was also going on when I wasn't touched. Mm -hmm. So like God's grace was just all over that. You tell me I can leave. And literally, like, what? That Monday I went back to work and I put in my two weeks. And everything shifted. Um, everything shifted. I made sure that I worked my tail off the whole two weeks. I made sure that the person behind me was in a good spot because it, that matters too. Yeah. Um, that was showing God. Like, they had nothing to do with the people there. That was me showing God that, like, hey, I'm not going to just quit and cuss people out and throw my stuff and not work. Like, they were getting the same mark, if not more, yeah. um, those last two weeks. And then, um, the day before I left, HR wanted to chat, and I sent them some information that was shared with me on my behalf. And they started an investigation on my behalf and paid me through the investigation. My last day in the office was, like, December 13th. My last Nike check was February, like, 2020. February 2020. So I got almost three months worth of checks. Um, well, two months worth of checks right there. That I was at home with my family, yeah. with my yeah. daughter yeah. at home. And what else, what else happened? And then I get a call. So, okay, I went past. So get off the phone and... Wifey's like, babe, God told you to do it, do it. I said, okay. Gave her a big hug, tears flowing. And probably 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from one of my friends that I used to work with Nike again, going back to relationships, mm -hmm. who is now over entertainment and influencer marketing for the NFL. Mm -hmm. And he's like, bro, I've seen you search you down here, fire. Like, can I, can we send you some shirts to die for the Super Bowl, like, for, like, our influencers? I'm like, what? Yeah, like, that, that was a whole $10,000 
contract. Out of nowhere. Out of, I literally out of 10 nowhere. minutes after I said, God, yes. Mm-hmm. God, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. God, I hear you. I didn't have a plan before that. Nope. I didn't have no savings before that. I didn't have an investigation. No other coming. opportunity no before opportunity that. No opportunity before that. Like, there was another job that was waiting. I was nope. like, you know what, I'm going to go. Nothing. 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 Just God, I'm being obedient. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm relinquishing control. Mm-hmm. That's oftentimes one of the hardest things to do. Like that, that was the toughest step. Yeah. And 10 minutes later, Ten thousand dollar deal. Now, <laughs> but this was even before we knew about the the investigation. Yeah. The checks and all that. Yeah. So I'm like, cool. Now my mind, ten dollars. Man, it's the NFL. They got money. I'm gonna get paid as soon as I get the job done. I'm like, when the job? January. I'm like, cool. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna send me a PTO check. I had like hundred some dollars of PTO left. Okay, we can ride on this until January, then we get this ten thousand dollar check. Well, <laughs> COVID hits. Yep. So Super Bowl happens. Shirts fire. Yep. Press was crazy. Things are just booming, and it's great. They already told me net thirty, which I knew about that because I've heard things. But think about net thirties and stuff. It's not only net sixty. Like the net 30 just for the contract. You probably won't get your money for another Listen, month after. We don't even want to go down that route, okay? <laughs> just know when you are a freelancer out here uh-huh. on net 30s and net 60s and net 45s, it's net whenever they do the paperwork. Do the paperwork so it's chill. not when you sign, nope. it's whenever they do their part and they start their net 30 process, that's when you get your money, if that's even somewhat on time. So they're like, okay, cool, boys. It's, it's, but now, um, the investigation has started. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting checks. Like, they're paying me as if I'm going to work and I never have to set foot. You never had to go back. You never had to go <laughs> You're back. You're not different. I did not have to go... They literally said, you can go home. You have no responsibilities. And we're going to pay you as long as this investigation goes. Could be six weeks. Could be six months. <laughs> but we're paying you throughout the entirety. I'm like, I honestly didn't believe until I got the first check. I was like, are they serious? Like, it wasn't like a deduction. It wasn't like, no, well, you get half of it because you're not in. Yeah. I got all my money. Mm-hmm. I was still a current PTO. Mm-hmm. I was the whole nine as if I was going to work, but I was at the crib with my family. Mm-hmm. Like, God knew. So, this is happening. God also knew that this money was going to come back. Yeah. So, these checks are coming. So, then February hits, and I'm like, well, you know, um, Super Bowl is happening, and people are out of office, and da 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 da. And I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> What can I do? So then, that's over. Now we get into like early March. So I'm like, okay, everybody should be back now. And well, here's the tracker number for the check, but it's sitting on somebody's desk. And it's COVID. And nobody's going into the office. Mm-hmm. This is when COVID really hit corporate America like on another level. So I'm like, what? So I got this tracker number. And I'm aimlessly putting it in like every day. Hoping and wishing and praying. Somebody picked it up. Because at some point, it was going to say, like, in root or whatever right. picked up. It was still, like, label printed the way, way to be scared. So I'm like, I'm hitting up the contacts. I'm like, he's like, man, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do because I'm not in the office either. I reached out to the people and they're not. So $10,000 check is just chilling somewhere. And we got bills. Y'all. And we got bills. And now... February had Nike checks are done, but my last PCO check was like stupid. So that was like pushing us through. So so then March hit, Mar- the end of March hit, and COVID is really getting real. And now we're really looking at the news. And at this point, yo, Jay was a CNN junkie. Like, she was just having TV on CNN all day. I would come to work I, like I know I'm really? not the only one, okay? I would come to work like that. <laughs> Really, 
all day. It was like, wild. Like a whole pandemic was happening, and nah, we didn't know was what was that. happening. You was doing that before the pandemic. Oh well, was like, okay, hey, with all the politics stuff. Yeah, this like, is true. This, is this true. was this when you true. was like in yeah. your Delta yeah, 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 politics yeah. zone. Yeah, like, she yeah, just yeah, saw yeah. red all the time. Yeah, politics, yeah. Was like everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, CNN popping like all day, every day. And she just getting more and more paranoid. So one day she was just like, call your mom, we leave. Like, we pack up. I'm like, what? We what? She's like, yeah, we're going home. I don't know if they're going to close the border to Texas. I don't know what they're going to do. I didn't know what they were going to do. <laughs> we're going home. So I'm like, uh, okay. Call my mom and she bloody it at. So she was just like, come home, baby. We're going to say, so literally, and what? Oh, and weeks? on top of that, we had to cancel our wedding, which was, I was distraught, okay? So I was also distraught. Wedding, so, like, this is another thing in the whole concept of leaving Nike, where it was like, we're also planning a wedding, a wedding that is a um, destination, destination wedding. wedding in Puerto Rico? In Mexico. In Mexico. So that was a whole other thing, where it's like, I um, definitely need the money. People had already paid, like we'd already had. Well, like, not even just that, like we had a partnership with the resort. So yeah. we were gonna be creating content with the resort. Yeah. We were gonna get most of, if not the entire thing, paid for. Yeah. Like the flowers, the venue, the yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, wow. so when COVID hit, it was like, wait, we probably shouldn't leave the country. Wait. We have to cancel our wedding. Wait. People are getting sick and dying. Wait, what? I can't be here. I can't be in Oregon without family, without yeah. truly family. Because we had friends and everybody was super supportive, but we everyone We're was a transplant. Like everybody it was, was like, too. like, like they were all like yeah. even more serious than us because like they were like. Asthma, yeah, underlying issues. We got kids, multiple. Issues, yeah, people were pregnant. People, yeah. So like, we were literally like everybody was taking it very serious. Yeah. And that was like, okay, well, the support that we could have, we don't, we we don't really even have access to that. Right. Because, right. It's um, not safe. It wasn't we safe. We, don't know we didn't on. know. So didn't call know. my mom. Um, we decided to leave. And our lease was just ending. Yeah. So our home wise. So yeah. <laughs> Things were working out without us realizing that things were working out. Yeah. So my my dad flew, or when my dad flew, my cousin flew in to help us pack. Madison flew in to help us pack. Yeah. Um, we packed, got a pie, the pie was delivered. We packed up the pie. We threw hella garbage in some random apartment complex. <laughs> I was talking about sneakers. I would just go and like drop off piles of sneakers like in boxes and like the kids would go crazy and yeah. it was it was incredible. But we're moving across the country. In the in the beginning of a pandemic. In the beginning of a pandemic. And we didn't I mean, it was just very scary, the whole thing. It was just very I mean, we have a nine month old, like we just, we're literally getting rid of two thirds of our things to Literally. stick it in a pod to go at some point. We had to sign a lease to an, a town home. So we Ikea. never saw. Cause Ikea makes it easy to throw stuff away oh. <laughs> instead of trying. <laughs> to bring to it, cause it ain't gonna last you know, anyway. It ain't gonna last it. the move. So it was like, it you know what? Last. I can place this easily. So yeah. we're just gonna break this down and get rid yeah. of it. But we literally <laughs> like didn't know where we were moving to. Uh, I mean, luckily we were moving back home to Dallas. So we knew the area enough. We knew, you know, all those things, but we didn't see the apartment or the townhome before we moved in. We didn't know, nope. like nope. we just, Sign stuff virtually and just yeah. left within like well, six weeks. Like so less than that. So we're packing, we get stuff done. Her and Sarai, Madison, y'all flew. Yeah, we flew. Um, and they left probably what two or three days before us, right? For the game. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Well, so we want our friends. They came and again, like everybody's quarantined for real. So like we literally set us off like two hours on our street with probably 10, 15 feet between all of us sitting on our cars, just talking, yeah. just saying, And that was so hard goodbye. to leave without, like, hugging them. Yeah. Like, these are people we did life with for three and a half years. Literally. Like, like, 
everything. Right. Like right. we, we at the hospital. The hospital when, just arrived. Yes. Yeah. They were literally in the hospital room with us like two hours after they I They were the her. ones that were prepared to house me for my cheating. Like they were Listen. like, Brad, you need to understand if we got you. Like we we really did do life with them in a, yeah. in a real way. Yeah. Set by isolated. Yeah. And then they leave. So the three of us are like packing some stuff. Um, me, my dad, and um, my cousin. And literally, like probably the day before, we were about to get on the road. The check came. Yeah. Like literally the day before the check came. I was in the mailbox and I'm just like, I called my babe. Like, it came. <laughs> like, like uh, the when relief? it was supposed to, like when, <laughs> when we needed it, not when I wanted it. I wanted it in Cause, January. Because listen, because the moving expenses, like unexpectedly, like it was just so much. It was just so yeah. much. On and the us. check came. Yeah. And the check came. It was like, wow. Okay. Um. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Like now we can we can continue. Right. Like we didn't. It wasn't a check to say, okay, go buy a house now when you get there. It was right. like, get you to the next point. Right. Pack, pack the last bit of stuff in, we pack Bolt, put him in the the, the truck, the Mercedes, mm-hmm. and we on the road, um, 30 hours. Yeah. 30 hours on the road. Um, this one, the sorry, story. Yeah. Well, you know now, I kind of told you, but, so I'm thinking, my cousin's coming. He has a license. We got three licensed drivers in the car. <laughs> so, you know, break it up, maybe, now you can break it up. 12, 12, and whatever's left, seven, eight hours, he can do it. We get in the car, and my, my pops is like, yeah. Um, you ready? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. Cool. Man, you got this. I'm like, huh? He's like, I don't trust him. <laughs> He's not driving. <laughs> He's not driving Wait, across the country. You said that? Well, he asked. <laughs> He asked our cousin, I'm like, hey, if you ever drove by open road for you, he's like, uh, I'm driven probably like, you know, two hours. And he's like, you know, <laughs> you got the experience. So I'm like, I was trying to like keep it together and not let him know, but I'm like, bro, are you serious right now? Like, I wasn't planning on this. So me and him drove, just us two, drove straight through. I mean, we called. It was scenic for a little bit. But then got Colorado, caught this crazy winter storm. It was like, what was it? It was probably three in the morning. And this is one of the scariest experiences of my life because it's a blizzard. I can't see nothing. I'm I'm banking on this one 18-wheeler that finally got in front of me that had lights trimming the back. I'm following him and standing in his tracks. He ended up um, um, pulling over at some point. I'm like, oh, my God. Then it takes us through this detour where, like, visibility was, like, non-existent. I, I'm just praying. I'm, look, God, so it was insane. But we made it. Y'all were at Bruce's. My dad's. Yeah. And we got there April 16th, April 17th. Stayed there for two weeks. Which was so good. Which was so good. It was just, like, after everything that had happened, with COVID and everything considered we're finally just chilling. Yeah. Like, we finally get rest. Yeah. And we needed it so bad. Like, God gave us rest. Because mm-hmm. we were just stressing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. outside of packing our stuff up, throwing stuff away, like, uh, handling a literally nine-month-old. The wedding. Like, the wedding. Then, like, we hadn't postponed it. We canceled it. We completely canceled it. Because we didn't know what, it was COVID. Like, we didn't know what was going on, like, what would be required. What, we didn't know nothing. So we was just like, well, shoot, um, guess we, we won't be getting married on June 13th anymore. And we're there for two weeks. And this is something too, like, no matter what season you're in, leaning into that season. season. Yeah. Like, we could have been battling about, well, we didn't want to leave Oregon and like, right. or look go at everything we lost or yeah. all that. But we were like, no, like we're here. Let's and just go. <laughs> Since we're here, now that we're here in um, 
in her dad's house. Like, let's enjoy this rest. Like, yeah. there was no, we just got this $10 check. There's no, like, extraness that we need. Like, we're chilling. Mm-hmm. Let's lean into it. We, we spent the mornings in the hot tub. Yeah. Got a, that was our first break from Sarai. Yeah. They would take Sarai for walks and stuff and just like, and we'd be like, well, shoot, like, we ain't had no time with just us without a kid in a minute. So like, we since were, she was born, <laughs> we were just enjoying it. Yeah. And even not knowing it then, but we were listening for what God was going to have us do next. Yeah. And what came out of that was the wedding. Yeah. So we, so this is April. We got made. June. So, spend time at this house. They have a beautiful home. It's isolated, middle of nowhere. Huge, big yard, one story flat. We didn't even know we wanted a one story house, which is what we have now. Right. And so, that experience. Yeah. So, we're like enjoying peace and quiet. Yeah. And like, wow, like, this is different. We go see our spot, and it was cool. Oh, it was like. We'll fast forward over that. Yeah, because that that was that was <laughs> that's all another experience. We'll fast forward over that because we really can't talk about that. We can't right. talk about that legally. For real, for real. legally. Um, so we'll let y'all in in there. But um, it was in downtown. It was nice. It was cool. High rise, three levels, all of that. But it was like loud, and it didn't really have like a yard, so we couldn't really enjoy like what we're used to, like being outside, being outside, yeah. and like. It was like from out in the, the trees amongst the beautiful nature mm-hmm. to the city of Dallas, like yeah. literally like the city of Dallas. And it was just an interesting experience, but we, would, we didn't spend a lot of time in there though. Yeah. We would oftentimes like leave and like yeah. go to, to your dad's, but my mom's yeah. were like homes and places that were just like more chill, more, more quiet, peaceful. More, more peaceful, more yeah. out of the way. And that was when we're like just talking about the wedding. Like we finally picked that back up and we're trying yeah. to figure out like what's gonna happen with that. Yeah. And then who had the idea to do it in the backyard? I don't know. I can't remember, honestly. I think it was I don't know. I can't remember how we came to that conclusion. I'll say for me internally, I hadn't shared this with you, but there was always this like homey, like backyard you know, wedding vibe and energy that I always thought was like, cool. What? Yeah, I really did. No. But I was I was honestly afraid to ask your dad to do it there. You work? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was just like, I mean, I don't want us to feel like we're mooching. Back then, Back then. I'm like, huh? This was almost two years ago now. <laughs> but back then, I'm like, man, we in a across the country. I ain't got no job. They're very much so like, have a job type yeah. of people. <laughs> <laughs> have a job type of people. Like, have a job, have a career, have a plan. Right. Like, they're that. Yeah, that's where I get it from. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm like, man, I got it. I'm shacking with his daughter. Oh, Lord. I done knocked her up. Oh, worry. <laughs> move her across the country, back across the country. We about to move into an apartment. Um, we're going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> like, in the eyes of man and society and the world, we're going backwards. I didn't even think about that, honestly. Oh, I did. <laughs> so I'm like, and now I want to ask this man to use his backyard to marry his daughter. Like, huh? But he's so he's such a a, a sweet person. Um, he grew up in the you know Midwest, so like he's just an amazing just person, and like Miss Michelle as well. Great people. So they never made it like awkward. And actually, like we were talking about like different things I wanted to do, like for the business. Mm-hmm. We just launched Gabo yeah. officially, and I'm looking for manufacturers and different things, and like they're actively like trying to. Help. help during this process yeah. so like I'm taking my iPad outside every day and literally I'm talking to God I'm watching my messages I'm I'm diving in but I'm also like what's what's gonna happen like what am I gonna do what are we gonna do 
And somehow we get to finally, why not do it in the backyard? Mm-hmm. Three weeks before the original day. Yeah. And we're like, okay, well, what we got? We had $7,000 mm-hmm. to work with. Yeah. All right, we got $7,000. That's including your dress. That's including. Yeah. And you got, did you get the dress in? Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. So she got her dress in Oregon. Yeah. That was a whole other thing. Yeah. And hadn't gotten size and fitted nope. for it because she was still like coming off of being pregnant. Yeah. So we got this this raw dress. We got seven thousand dollars in the backyard, and it became the best. Still, to this day, in my opinion, the best day of my life. One hundred percent. The best day of my life. 100%. Y'all seen the footage. Okay, we we gonna add some clips in yeah. here or something like that, but yes, if y'all, like, remember when I posted, like, you know, the photos, I mean, so many people from our, like, just relationships that we had built over the years, like, having Cindy and, and what is it, Ari? What is it? Huh? Ari, Ari? Alberto. Alberto. Shout out Alberto. Listen, from my, from my old early marketing Maggie days yes, in Texas. Like, yes. dude was still a, a sophomore in high school. We was still in him to shoot, like, content for us, like, sponsor Nike content. It was crazy. He was actually borrowing school's cameras, cameras. and lenses to shoot us. Wow. Yeah. But like, yeah. him, I mean, him, Cindy. Um, How do we get in touch with the web page? I forgot. Like, Erica, I, well, I just found her. Simply God. just found this this God. morning. Erica like put together our wedding in a matter of literally three weeks. I would inspire ones <laughs> that I got a laser engraved, the date, the location, and everything. And the person I used, she done some Nike hangers for me mm-hmm. like four years prior when I was in Mark, maybe five years prior. So it was like Literally, we were where we were supposed to be when we were supposed to be there. 100%. God made sure that everything was like here, 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 here. One hundred percent. And I still ain't no job. <laughs> <laughs> still jobless. But you could tell, like, we, yeah, we had the best. Our families came together. My dad DJ. Yeah. Um, we had a and party that night. Ooh. We jumped in the pool. We jumped in the pool with all the of stuff it. on. Like, um, <laughs> Your wedding dress. What about it? Then that, something happened with that that was very like, yeah, that was God. Like, you got to fit. Oh, yes, I got it. I got fitted like in a matter of like, like two weeks. Usually fittings take like, what, six to eight weeks or something like that. And I got fitted in two weeks. Like, it was um altered at the altar in Dallas. Like, they were incredible. Took my baby. Up. They literally, Took and so I still got up. to have like my Took like my say up. yes to the dress moment yeah. with my mom so, and his mom. Which and, was big for you. Yes, you that was sweet. That. I I wanted that moment because I didn't get to choose a dress with them in Oregon. They were all in Texas, so I got to have my sisters there, and like it was just incredible to have that moment with the champagne and like the whole thing, even yeah. in COVID. But like we still got to have that moment. And. My um, bishop that I grew up with, probably the most consistent man in my life. Got a chance to officiate him, which was like huge for me. Like that was always a thing as a kid, like women out there, dress, beauty moment. Like for me, it was like, I want this man to officiate my wedding. Mm-hmm. That was possible too. Yeah. So like, like literally God gave us things that we didn't even know we wanted or needed um, during that wow. season. So in this seven month span, Leave Nike, mm-hmm. investigation, mm-hmm. start a new business, mm-hmm. got a new kid, mm-hmm. um, Move. COVID. Co- COVID. Move across the country. Yeah. Um, get a new apartment blindly. Mm-hmm. Get married. Yeah. Six months in. <laughs> like six months in. It was a very wild ride, for sure. I continue to think about even like talking about this now, just like God was just in every single yeah. part, like every single thing. Um, we didn't want for anything. We didn't, 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 like it, it was just the moment 
we move with the cloud. Everything changed. We're meeting people that are like, they're, they're not just doing their jobs. They want to help us. Yeah. They went out of their way. Like, they yeah. bent their prices. They, they, yeah. they, like, like. Yes, everybody, every single vendor we had adjusted their prices to fit our Some budget. of them was like, we don't want, we don't want you to pay us. And we're talking about, like, Alberto is one of the top, he now takes photos for um, Jordan Brown for, like, all the NFL guys that are, like, in their houses with their gear on and, that. like, He's a big deal. And like Cindy, thousands whole, of shoot. Cindy, whole other level. Okay. Like, and they want to be there for us. Yeah. And we couldn't pay them or repay them. Um, nor did we did we try to, mm-hmm. you know, go overboard, but it's like God was just working all in and through that thing. Yeah. It's wow. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm lost with words, honestly, because when you think of time periods like that, and we go back, we continue to talk about like times growing up, how like God was in that thing and shielding us and protecting us, and like this is no different. Where God shielded and protected us through so much, yeah. and we still not deserving, but He's just been like so great to us and so faithful through the whole and so thing. So faithful, like we were, we were, you know worried at times we were didn't know how things were going to pan out at times but he was just always there like right on time like just successfully getting us from point to point to point and every time we said okay god we're gonna do what you say do he took care of us beyond he 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 so rewind a little bit my last time on campus they, what they called, he was in a car, driving through downtown Poland, and they called and asked oh, yeah. if one of the leaders could be in the um, final like wrap-up meeting. Like, they wrapped up the investigation. I was like, hey, um, I want to share our findings and like the results, but there's a special request that this person that's normally not in these types of meetings, but wanted to be in the meeting. So I put her on mute. I'm like, hey, what you think? She wasn't even my wife then, but I knew. Talk to your wife. <laughs> I ain't making decisions without talking to her. Yes, I'm the leader and I'm the head and all of those things. But this is my half, my better half, my whole side. So without, why would I cut my side out and make the decision with this much? Why would I cut my body off and make the decision with this much? So I'm talking, babe, because I don't do it, honestly. My heart, no, I don't want him there. <laughs> But wife was like, you know what? Hear him now. I was like, okay. Unmuted her. I was like, cool. He can come. Set the meeting. It was like the next day or something. Go in there and they apologize. He apologized to my face. They wrapped up the investigation. Um, and it turned out that I was in the right. Mm-hmm. And they offered me a position. Mm-hmm. and wanted me to start on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, I'm going to talk to God about this. I said that. I'll let y'all know tomorrow. And I was like, okay, we'll close tomorrow because we left you to come on Monday. It was Wednesday. I'm like, cool. I already knew what God told me to do. To be honest, even now, I don't know why. I, even, <laughs> I should have told him no at the moment. Yeah. But we I had to read. Yeah, I had yeah, to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It was a lot because yeah, that was, was a lot. Well, because it was tempting. It was a job. And we didn't really, I mean, we had kind of a plan, role, but it wasn't a plan. It was the role that I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. And which I'm glad I didn't get, which is another That's a whole, whole nother, nother thing. That's a whole nother because thing. Because thanking God for doors that he didn't open. Because I didn't want that door. No. Nope. I thought I did. But what I know now about that door, I did not want that door. Yeah. It would have been worse than what, you had what I was experienced. already experiencing. And can we just take a moment and talk about, like, how God will set a table and have your enemy sitting there? Oh, oh. Like. Talk that talk. Because okay. I didn't even know. Like, yeah. Literally. Oh, my God. Like, literally. This man literally. This HR person. 
who wasn't trying to hear me sitting at this table. This ER person that had interrogated me a couple times about some other stuff was sitting at this table. The leader that I was like jumping heads to talk to to get help in my situation was sitting at this table. Mm -hmm. Literally all sitting at this table to apologize. Yeah. I was the last person to walk in this room. Mm -hmm. I walked in that room feeling empowered. Mm -hmm. Like, hold on. The tables have turned. Mm -hmm. I walked in a few rooms where I'm about to go in here and have to like speak up for myself and have to give reason and, and have defend, to defend myself. Defend and have to yourself defend. like for real. Like yeah. there were accusations against you that were so, they were so ridiculous that we, listen, we are gracing the people <laughs> and this whole, this whole situation. By not going into details, okay? And we, I'm healed. Listen, and this we need a whole part of like the wilderness journey. Too, why we can't even yeah. speak about it now? Yeah. Because y'all, if we weren't who we are today, this conversation would sound a lot different. But we recognize the God in the yeah. whole situation. Yeah. So it's not even about the people. Yeah. It's not about the schemes of the enemy in yeah. that whole situation. Cause he thought. He thought that he was going to win. He thought that he would win. Oh, he thought he was going to get you trapped. He thought, at Nike. He, he thought, thought you was going to take that job and you was going to stay and it was going to be a whole nother path you're going to be on. Three three and do all the three nope. and five year plan. All of that. But I, I left, called wife. Yeah, I had up the building. I called him the stairs like, oh, man. He apologized. <laughs> <laughs> they offered me a job. And, um... <laughs> I called him the next day and said no. Mm -hmm. Because God told me to say no. Yep. Like the obedience wasn't to a point. It was all the way through. Mm -hmm. Slow obedience is still disobedience. 99% of obedience and 1% of disobedience is still disobedience. Yeah. So we to go through all of that, get these to do all these things and then get to the point and say, you know what? Yeah, this is nice. Let me go. Uh -huh. Am I win? Turned in my stuff and the rest of history. So yeah, like God said, table and that that jump started all the blessings to where in a year's time we we moved across the country, started started new jobs, launched companies, got married, um, got pregnant again, bought a home, and bought a house mm -hmm. in a year. In a year. In a year. God was that faithful in a year. And I made support squad. And you made support which squad. Which was a, it was a very, very large check. Yeah. And stable work for yeah. a year. Yeah. And as a content creator, that's like non-existent. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah, we, we, when the cloud moves, move. Period. Cloud stays, stay. Because what I learned during that season, what we learned during that season is God's presence is really all we need. Mm -hmm. God's presence is enough. I mean, the house process, that's a whole other story that we'll get into another day as well. But like, even that, all the people were just different. Yeah. Like, sent to us. Yeah. Wanted to help us. Yeah. The best in their class, but humble enough to help us in, in all of our... Um, noviceness, if that's a word, <laughs> because we didn't know nothing about this process. But yeah, like God, when God's presence is there, everything has to, everything has to work. Yeah. Like everything has to be. It has to be. And if you're be. going through something during that season, it's because there's something that has to be pulled out of you. Yeah. But it's still God, love, our, um, our producer, um, who is just an incredible person that like we were having a conversation last week and he said um pain is grace and that changed things for me because it, it brought context yeah to what i've been feeling like a lot of these things that we're talking about were painful mm -hmm. like painful a lot of tears a lot of things a lot of and and nike like for the last probably you know six months i was there was painful mm -hmm. but that was God gracing me in my disobedience. So, go figure. 
<laughs> when I get in his obedience, everything shifts. And I ain't got no, I don't have a nine to five, I don't kind of have a nine to five again. I don't, as a matter of fact, one of my homeboys texted me after I went live and I left Nike. He was like, hey man, like my director of Adidas yeah. asked me about you. <laughs> I kind of told her that. You weren't really into the corporate life no more, but I figured I'd keep the time to see. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm I'm good on that. And yeah, God is, yeah, wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Thank you. None of this is possible without you. None of this is possible without you. None of this is thought of without you. None of this will happen without you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Mm. Yeah. Stop point? Yeah. Stop and point. Stop and point. Stop and point. God, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for your love. God, we thank you for everything that you are, even when we don't understand it, you're still good. Even in our pain, God, you're still good. Even in our disobedience, you're still good. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you for your continued patience and your grace and your love with us. Thank you for being the example of a father with unlimited patience for his children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. We so appreciate your support and we'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you are listening and also visit us on social media. You can find us at Mark Z. Godbolt and Jade Godbolt on Instagram as well as The Godbolt Life on Instagram.